Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. Um, really, on this topic, I'm just going to be, uh, you know, uh, talking more on the um, the prophets, all right? You know, because as you read, and um, I, was, I was actually thinking about it, Job 9 and 24, you know, we know it's talking about Esau, okay? But, you know, just the, the the wording, all right, of the ending of that verse where it says, if not, where and who is he? Okay, you can you can apply that to the prophets because, you know, you have people that don't want to accept the fact that we are the prophets of the most high. You know, they, 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 they don't they don't believe that we're men of the Lord. All right. And really, they have no valid reason. All right. Because a man of the Lord isn't really this uh, uh, um, for the most part to this world. It's just not by what he what he looks like per se, all right, but more of what he's saying or his character or how he carries himself or how the spirit of the Lord deals with him. Okay. So if we're not the prophets, then who and where are the prophets? Okay. Now I looked up the definition of the word prophet. Okay, and I'm gonna read it real quick, and then we'll go through a couple of precepts here just to prove it because um, if you notice, man, you have a lot of people now who are who are sort of they they really they're getting involved, you know, they're getting involved in in in, in this truth in this truth, man. Okay, concerning the whole Israelites thing, see, it's not just some some uh uh, uh um you know uh fad or something like that. No, okay, they're getting involved now, whether whether it's it's um to help or to try to scoff at it or try to debunk it. What are you doing? You're you're only giving publicity, and in this truth, man, any publicity is good publicity. See, because we're not the ones who are uh, um, who make people uh, uh, believe. All right, we can't make anybody of the elect. But our job is to what? To send the message, to spread the message. Okay, so all you're doing is you're giving us a bigger field. All right, and the easier means to 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 scatter the seeds, to sow the seeds in the field. All right. Nonetheless, this is uh, the definition of a prophet from the online etymology dictionary. It says a person who speaks for God, one who foretells uh, an inspired preacher. Okay, one a person who speaks for God. So we are the mouthpiece or the mouthpieces, all right, of the Most High. The scriptures say that the the the, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So if you are a prophet in, in the in the in the in the past life, because reincarnation is in the Bible, guess what? You'll be a prophet again in, in this lifetime. All right. Yahweh Shai spoke about uh, reincarnation. Okay. He told his disciples if they will receive it, that John the Baptist was Elijah coming back. All right. So that was that was that was reincarnation. They understood it back then. When he asked this, when he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? All right, what did he mean by that? Because he was he was he was a uh, 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 um it, it was a it was a, a a big thing. It was a talk of the town, okay. Because here it is. You got this this guy. He comes. He's doing all these miracles. He has his, his disciples, his followers. He's prophesying. Guess what? They they Israel wasn't. You know, Israel still knew all right about about their history and our forefathers and the prophets and all. So they knew. Oh well, he's coming in the same spirit. As a prophet, some say he was a, a, a John the Baptist. Some say he was Jeremiah. Some say he was one of the other prophets. But why would they give answers like that? If reincarnation was such a foreign concept, see, but it's actually biblical. Nonetheless, if you were a prophet in your in your past lifetime, you're going to be a prophet this time. OK. So it says here, um, I'm going to just get to the main parts. Do 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 do. An interpreter, spokesman, especially of the gods, okay. Because what do we do? We 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 are uh, um, we come and tell you the message that that the Lord uh, uh, um, told us Amos three and seven. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but He revealeth His secret unto His servants, the prophets. Because before the Lord brings judgment, He 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 uh, uh, foretells, okay by by uh first off putting the spirit on his prophets to go out there and warn the people of the judgments or of what the lord is about to do 
And that's what you had the prophets do. They would go and tell the people beforehand, yo, this is what the Lord has planned. This is what he's about to do. So before the Lord did something, he would send his prophets first. All right. So we could bear witness and it would be fair. You had a chance to repent if it was if it was judgment. All right. Some uh, you read in the scriptures, man, there will be a time when maybe a, a certain or a particular king or a particular man will be in a certain predicament and he doesn't know what to do. And the Lord will send a prophet to him. All right. Telling him that, hey, don't worry about this or don't do this because I'm about to deliver you or I'm about to do this. So before the Lord did that, he would send a prophet. All right. After he has revealed that that act or that secret to the prophet, he will send that prophet to go and, and deliver the message before the Lord uh, had that action come to pass. OK. And oftentimes it was like captivities and all these different things. OK. So uh, and that's what we're doing. You see, there's a difference between what we do and what everybody else does. See, everybody likes to talk about faith, but we actually exhibit it. We actually show forth. All right. People want to say, oh, well, if, if, if God asked me to go out there and put on a garment and teach, I'd do it. Yeah, well, no, obviously not. <laughs> obviously not, because look, man, people would, would they like to say it. You know, oh, I have faith no matter what, I'll be good. But when the time comes, it's a different story. Yo, stop playing. Yo, this is not the time for games. Wait, what happened? Your faith just became games now? I thought you had faith. You were talking a hell of a talk, and out of nowhere, now, now, now you know, because people, the, 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 the people's ambitions are really just in their mouths. It's just in their words. All right? It's not in their works. Um, it says, it says, especially of the gods inspired preacher or teacher from pro before, all right, or forward, hence in front of, plus the root of fan, uh, fanai, all right, which you got the word prophesy, all right, pro before and fanai or fasai to speak, all right, to speak, to tell. So a prophet does what? A prophet says before or he tells before or he speaks before the prophecy comes to pass. So that, that is what a, a prophet does, man. Okay. Now, all these different, you see, the reason you have so many different controversies, okay, is because the things that, that, the, that the world believes in is different than what we came with, starting with our elders and their elders. That's why you have so many controversies, because it's a new doctrine. Okay. It's a new doctrine, but it's sweeping through the minds of the world. And who did the Lord use to bring that out? All right. It wasn't these Christians. It wasn't these pastors, these Muslims. It wasn't any of them. Okay. We're in the last days. And who has the Lord set up? First Corinthians 4 verse 9. For I think that the Most High has set forth us the apostles last as they were appointed to death. Because after after the Lord, hey, Ezekiel 33 and 33. Um. After the Lord takes his prophets of the scene, what they prophesied about comes to happen, man. As a matter of fact, um, a good example of that. All right, this is the book of Tobit. Uh, no, I think it's actually Tobit. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, there's a book of Tobit, chapter 14, and, and I'm going to jump. So now it says here, uh, and when he was, uh, I'll start at the top. So Tobit made an end of praising the Most High, and Tobit was a righteous man, all right? He was 8 and 50 years old when he lost his sight, which was restored to him after 8 years. And he gave alms and he increased in the fear of the Lord, uh, uh, the Lord power and praised him. And when he was very aged, he called his son and his and the sons of his son. So so that was if you read the book of Tobit, you know, you know that the son of Tobit was Tobias, you know, and then he had children. It says and they they um they were in in um 
they were uh, uh, part of those those captives that the uh, Assyrian kings had taken out. I believe I think this was during the time of uh, uh, um, um, Shalmaneser the fifth. You know, but the the time we're speaking of right now is a little after that. But the point is here, okay, that this this what happened here, okay, Jonah prophesied of it, okay. And guess what? Tobit is gonna. Well, we're gonna go into it. it says, um, and he was, and and when he was very aged, he called his son and the sons of his son and said unto him, My son, take thy children. For behold, I am aged and I am ready to depart out of this life. Go into media, my son. For I surely believe those things which Jonas the prophet spake of Nineveh, because they were they were uh, um they were in Nineveh. All right. Because remember, that's where when they got deported from from Israel. All right, Naphtali and all the other northern uh, uh, tribes, they got taken to to those places around the river of Gozan. As you read in the book of Kings. So Jonah had prophesied, all right, that, that Nineveh was gonna fall. Now they repented, but the prophecy still came to pass. Okay. And so uh um Tobit was telling Tobias, go into media, for I surely believe those things which Jonas the prophet spake of Nineveh, that what that it was gonna fall. Well, that it is <laughs> keep going, that it shall be overthrown. And that for a time peace shall rather be in media, and that our brethren shall lie scattered in the earth uh, from that good land, and Jerusalem shall be desolate, and the house of God in it shall be burned and shall be desolate for a time. All right, because um, after the destruction of Nineveh, okay, that's when you had uh, the Babylonians come into power. But they were ruling in, a, in an alliance with the Medians. So the Median Empire and the Babylonian Empire were ruling at the same time, but they were in alliance. That's why he says here, uh, for a time shall rather be uh, peace, shall, uh, shall rather be in media. Okay. And then he says what? That uh, 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 Jerusalem shall be desolate because at that time, all right, after Babylon came into power, that's when the southern kingdom got their got their work, you know. When when uh, um when Nebuchadnezzar uh, the second, okay, came there and he, you know, they destroyed the Jerusalem, they broke down the walls, ravaged the temple, and all of that. Okay, nonetheless, Tobit was was telling uh, Jonah, Salakia. Tobit was telling Tobias about Jonah the prophet and what he had prophesied. Okay, and he was warning him. He was like, "Yo, you got to get out of here, man." So. Um, I'm gonna jump down to verse eight. And now, my son, depart out of Nineveh, because that those things which the prophet Jonah spake shall surely come to pass. So Jonah was prophesying these things that Jonah said. He said it before it happened. Okay, that's why he was a prophet, prophesied to say before. All right. So Tobias or uh, Tobit, believing this, warned his son. And told him to leave because the prof the prophecy that Jonah had prophesied was gonna come to pass. And guess what? When you jump, when you come down, um do, 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 do. I'll start at verse jump jump into verse 13, where he became old with honor and he buried his father and mother-in-law honorably. This is talking about Tobias, all right. Because remember, when he went to get his wife. You know, it was it was in a different a different land. But after his parents, his his uh, Tobit and Anna had died, he went over there to his, his parent, his father and mother in law. And then, like it says here, he buried his father and mother in law honorably, and he inherited their substance and his and his father Tobit's. And he died at Agbatain in Media, being a hundred and seven and twenty years old. So he lived he lived for a pretty long time. But before he died, he heard of the destruction of Nineveh. Was that not prophesied by Jonah? Now, it came to pass many years after, but it still came to pass, which was taken by uh, Nabucodonosor and Asuras, and before his death, he rejoiced over Nineveh. Now, this, if, when you read this, you got to understand that uh, a lot of the scriptures, if not all, 
in the Apocrypha are in the Greek transliteration. Okay, so that's why it will say it like this. But really, uh, this Nabucodonosor was a uh, Nabopolassar, and um, this As Asurus here is the Greek transliteration of um, Syaxeres, which was the Median king. They, when you when you actually look into it in secular history, they were the ones who had taken down uh, Nineveh. Okay, so nonetheless, the point is that Jonah had prophesied these things. Okay before before they happened man that's what made that's see that's what the prophets did man that was a validation all right you have people now going around calling themselves prophets just as a title oh pastor prophet chief uh priest king uh uh, uh all of the above man prime minister and all of this what is one prophecy he's made just because people don't understand the word prophet or, or what it means to prophesy or what a prophecy is. They think that a pastor, a prophet, all of them, you just, it just sounds like something ancient and spiritual and God is dealing with it. So we're going to boil it up together and we're just going to call this person a prophet. No. All right. The prophets were prophets because the Lord put that spirit. They, they, the prophets were created to be prophets. All right. Just like you have musicians who it's in their spirit to sing and to perform and to, you know, do all those things. You have boxers and athletes that are just so good at it naturally is because they were created to do that. Today you have MMA and boxing and kickboxing and all that. In the past you had the gladiators, okay, and all these different things. Guess what? It's the same thing with the prophets, man. Everybody has their lot. So the prophets from the beginning, as it tells you in Luke 1 and 70, what? They were. They have always been prophets. That spirit of of being a prophet has always been within us. Okay, and that's why we're doing what we're doing now in today's day and age, and it's so different. All right, to this world, showing you that they weren't before. Look, man, before the Lord woke us up, these people out here going around preaching Christianity and all this extra stuff. They weren't no prophets, man. Okay, so back to First Corinthians four and nine. It says, uh. Set, set forth us apostles last as they were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men all right we are the most talked about thing man the, the, the this church stuff this christianity stuff it's all played out you know it's all played out what we're doing is different because what we're doing is legit and the reason is because people see yo these guys they're not doing it for uh, uh, as a publicity stunt or for attention, because if you were to do that, if you were if you if you were to go out there for attention and publicity, whatever, and you weren't getting any, eventually you would stop. But they come back every week. They see us there. They go on YouTube. They see us there. They go to a different country. They see us there. They hear us. They see us everywhere they go. They're like, yo, these guys are everywhere, and they are diligent. They are consistent. They're persistent, all right? They just, they keep coming out. They keep coming out. Wait, yo, I walk past these guys every week and they're still there. See, that is different, all right? They're not in a building. They're out there. Whether it's cold, whether it's winter, they're out there, man. They must be really serious about this. Yeah, because that's 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 how the Lord set us up, okay? This is Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. And that's what we do. See, other, others won't do that. They won't show you your transgressions and your sins. They'll tell you you're all good. And that's why people don't like us because we tell them what the problem is and tell them that they got to fix it. We tell them they have to repent. All right. We don't tell them the smooth stuff. Amos 5 and 10. What? They, they hate him that rebuketh at the gate. And abhor him that speaketh uprightly. But that's what the prophets always did. Why do you think they were stoned? Why do you think they were killed? Why do you think people people uh, 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 either feared or didn't like them? All right. You had those that listened, like we like we just read in Tobit. All right. You had those that took heed. All right. But then you also had those that didn't that didn't listen, man. Uh, read Second Chronicles thirty six and sixteen. All right, so I ended with this. This is Ecclesiastes 6 and 22, because what we have is different. Yeah, you see, 
a Christian can have knowledge of the scriptures. And we also have knowledge of the scriptures. All right. You can have Edomites. They have knowledge of the scriptures. But there's a difference. Okay. There's only, you can only know so much. All right. With just knowledge. Knowledge is data. Knowledge is information. You can know the history. You can know uh, uh, every single precept from, from, uh, from, from Genesis to Revelation. All right. But there's something that we have that they don't. And that's the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Because you know what that does? That allows us to link the scriptures. That allows us to understand the knowledge. And then it allows us to apply wisdom. You see? So the spirit has allowed us to take it further, two steps further. All right? As where these people think, oh, well, we, we also know the Bible. The, the, the Bible is not just about knowing it. You have to understand it to be able to break it down. To then be able to use it. Romans 15 and 4. What was written a fourth time was written for our learning. Not just so you can know it. All right. But that it will benefit you. Um, let me see. I think there's a scripture in Ezra. Uh, Yep, Second Ezra is fourteen and twenty-two. Let me see. Uh. Okay. Uh, Second Ezra is twenty. Um, fourteen and twenty-two. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Spirit into me. And I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law, that men may find thy path, and that they which live in the latter days may live. Okay? So, for, what was the first thing Ezra asked for? He asked for the Lord to send him what? The Holy Spirit. Because that was gonna, that was what's gonna give him the understanding and the the remembrance and the, the 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 information to write down. But guess what? If something is written down in the Holy Spirit or in the Spirit, you need to be in the Spirit to understand that. If something is said through the Spirit, you need to have the Spirit to understand what was said, because really the the Spirit is like a different language, so to speak. And if you don't speak that language, you're not gonna understand what's being said. That's why Yahushai spoke to uh, 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 a lot of these people in, in parables. And they weren't just regular parables. They were spiritual parables. You see? And, and that's why he told his disciples, blessed are your eyes. Okay? Because they see, and, and, and basically these people don't see it, man. Okay? So that, that spirit has made us different. That's what, that's what makes us true prophets, man. The Lord has allowed us to be skillful with this word and we can take it a step further. All right. Because it's spiritual. It's natural. It's not forced. It's not made up. It's not fake. It's not mediocre. Okay. That is the spirit of the most high, man. And it's working because it is his will. He gave us the spirit to do these things because he willed it. That's what he wants. That's why it's working. All right. But if you're going out there like a vagabond uh, prophet like you read in, in the book of Acts about those vagabond Jews, that's what's going to happen to you, man. The Lord is going to give you up because what you're doing is not authentic. It's not authorized by the Lord. So you're going to get to that door, and guess what? It's going to be locked because you, don't, you do not have the authorization, all right? This is not, this is declassified or slakia. This is classified, all right? It's only declassified to the, uh, 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 to the men of the Lord. All right. Now I'm ended with this. This is Ecclesiasticus chapter six, verse twenty-two. For wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest unto many. So you see, like I said, people can have knowledge of the scriptures. They can know different accounts, what happened, the archaeology, and and all these different things. All right. But do they understand what certain precepts mean? Because if they did, there wouldn't be such a big controversy about the uh, uh, John three sixteen. OK, or about uh, uh, the virgin birth and all these different things, because they don't understand. They know the account that's written, but they don't understand what it means. 
Isaiah seven and fourteen, a virgin shall 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 uh, um shall you know shall conceive and you know bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. They don't understand what that means. Okay, they know that it's written, but they don't understand it. You see, and that's why it's a controversy. All right, because they can't get it, because the Holy Spirit hasn't been given to them. Hence, they're not prophets, man, because they that's a secret that the Lord revealed to his, his prophets, man. The whole thing about the mystery of the Gentiles, guess what? That is also a, 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 a myth. That's why it's called a mystery. All right. And they don't understand that. They know it's written in there, but they don't understand it. We understand it. So we're able to use wisdom. We're able to apply our understanding plus our knowledge. OK, in the way we move. So when we're out there and we see somebody come up that might look like somebody of another nation, because not only do we know that there's a scripture that talks about this, we understand what that means. When we read about Greeks and the Gentiles, we know that in that in certain cases, it's talking about Israelite foreigners. All right. Israelites who lost their 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 heritage or their the uh, their nationality, so to speak. All right. And they started living like heathen nations. But uh, by blood. Their line goes back to an Israelite. See, that's the understanding of it. Not just knowing that Paul spoke to, to the Romans and he spoke to the, to the Jews, then to the Greeks. You understand what that means. And when you understand what that means, you're able to use wisdom. So if somebody comes up to you, you're not quick to just say, oh, you're a Hamite. Oh, you're an Edomite. Oh, you're this. Why? Because you understand. So you can use wisdom. You can say, hold up. Let me try his spirit first. Because I don't want to condemn somebody that might just be a possible uh, Israelite or an elect. That blood is going to be on my hands. So now I'm going to move differently because I understand. All right, bring out this precept. Let's test his spirit. See? And that is something that, like it says, that is using wisdom. But like it says here, for wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest onto many. Okay? That's why not everybody can be a prophet. All right. Being a prophet is a very high office, man. And the Lord has to ordain you for that. Just like you can't just walk into a store and say, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the store director. I want to be the manager. No. OK, they assess how you work and all that. And then they give you a promotion. They say, OK, you based on how you work and how you move, you can you can manage the store or you can direct the store. So we're going to make you a director or a manager. All right. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, okay? Um, hey, man, look, the time is coming, Ezekiel 33 and 33. As a matter of fact, yeah, let me read that. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come, the vision, the prophecies. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them, all right? That's when people are going to understand. But guess what? For some of you, like we keep saying, it's going to be too late, Okay, so with that, I hope this was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechak Wadash. Until next time, Shalom.